Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, yesterday we did our entire top agar phage titering video and today we have the results. So we're gonna take a look at what the plates look like and we're gonna figure out what the titers are. We're gonna put them into Excel and we're gonna show you how to go from plates to actual graphs that you could show to your professor. Uh, you know, if you did the experiment better, maybe you publish it. So without further ado, let's take a look at the plates. Um, so what I've done is I've taken our top agar plates and I've put them on these pieces of black construction paper. I do this because it makes them easier to see. And we have our two sets of plates. Um, we have our uh, C1 tra-R fusion here uh, and here. This is induced, this is uninduced. And over here we have our T4M gene. This one is uninduced and this one is induced. Um, so just a couple things to notice, uh, to, to note real quick. Um, we have an uninduced T4 top plate here, so we have all of our different strains. Um, and we have the PBAD driving the T4M gene. And in here we have not induced our PBAD. And if you take a look at the plate, it looks okay, it's kind of cloudy. Uh, you can see definite spots in there, which is good. Those are phage blacks. Um, but if you look at the induced condition, it doesn't look nearly as healthy, and you can actually see individual colonies here. So, without any other information, my first instinct would be to say, I think I overinduced and I got some toxicity, and my cells didn't grow up, which means I didn't get a thick enough, uh, I guess, kind of a lawn of bacteria for the, for the bacteriophages to lace. Uh, if you look really closely, you can see that there actually is a little bit of clearing uh, around the colonies, but that's, that goes across the board. All of these plates that I induced with the PBAD T4M, they're looking pretty sparse compared to these other ones. Again, here's another side by side. This one grew up a little bit better. You can actually see phage plaques there. But these ones, not too hot. This one, again, you can see individual colonies. And when you see individual colonies, you know that it really did not grow up that well. So again, you need to really pay attention to what the top agar looks like, if it grew up well, if it did not grow up well. Because uh, if it did not grow up and you don't see plaques, it's not that your phage didn't work, it's just that there's no bacteria to lice, so you don't see uh, a phenotype. Uh, but let's go back over here to the C1, because this portion of the experiment worked a little bit better. So, just a quick review one more time. We have uh, these eight plates. Uh, the top is uninduced, the bottom is induced, and then we have four different strains. We have DH5-alpha, DH10B, MG1655, and MC1061. These are common lab strains. And on each plate, we have two tubes of lambda. We have a lambda clone one, a lambda clone two, a lambda vir, and then a T4. So the first thing I want to point out uh, is, I mentioned in the last video that I was uncertain about our two tubes of lambda. And you can see that we have very, very different phenotypes. Here in our first lambda, we have small clearings. So what you're seeing again, uh, the top agar is basically a bunch of bacteria and then you put a, a dab of bacteriophage laden liquid and those bacteriophages lice a bunch of your bacteria and they clear out that bacteria giving you this clear plaque and this this uh, lambda phage one kind of small and it dies it poops out right around there but this other one this other tube that we had labeled lambda uh, is something else because you can see the plaques are a lot bigger and then once we go down to single phages you can see three individual phage clearings one two three and they're way bigger than anything that we have over here so I think this one is contamination and that's part of the reason why I did this experiment uh, so I'm going to maybe trash this and uh, make some more lambda phage out of this one um, so let's if we can maybe uh, see the clearings real quick. It helps if you kind of go in the light. You can see uh, those clearings right there. Uh, so again, the one on the right, right there, is lambda. Here's something else. We don't know what it is. And then here's our lambda veer. And then right on the left, or <laughs> over there on the left, you can sort of see a little bit of T4. It didn't clear as well, though. Um, so that's kind of what you expect to see when you're looking at the uh, phage plates. So 
um, what we would do if we want to take this into to a graph is we're actually going to do some counting on these phage plaques. We're going to see how far down our serial dilution we got clearing, and then we can put that all into a graph. Uh, but again, one last time before we move on, uh, we can already get some results just by looking at it. So if we take, we, you know, we have four rows. Let me pull this out. I think we're getting a little bit of shadow here. Um, there we go. Um, so we have on this top plate, one, two, three, four. Uh, far left is lambda, so it goes down one, two, three. I can see a little bit of clearing on four. So we have four little spots of clearing. That's four orders of magnitude. But then if we look at this plate, let me bring this over so you can see that. Uh, we don't have any clearing over here. So that means that this plate, when we added our ligand, which in this case is acyl homoserine lactone, um, it did something to our cells in order to protect it from being lysed. Uh, in this case, it dimerized TRA-R, which dimerized the N-terminal domain of C1, which bound to the PR promoter on our lambda, which forced it to go into lysogeny instead of lysis. So that's really cool. Right off the bat, you can see that without counting. That's a really obvious phenotype if you're looking out for it. And then, again, this weird thing that is not lambda, that didn't do it, so that is another piece of evidence that tells me whatever the heck was in that other tube is not actually lambda. And then if we go over another row, here's our lambda veer. A lambda veer is a mutant of uh, regular lambda, which is in normal bacteria or E. coli strains, it will always just go into lysis, it won't do lysogeny. Um, and this is a veer strain because it had uh, C1 and the promoter that drives C1 knocked out. However, our cells provide C1, so that makes kind of an interesting, uh, you know, experiment. So over here on this plate where we did not induce, one, two, three, four, I think about five, looking from back here, maybe six, but I see definitely clearly five orders of magnitude clearing when there's no induction. But as soon as we dimerize our C1 using that TRA-R uh, AHL combo, completely protected. So again, right off the bat, you can see two very clear phenotypes. Uh, in this case, the T4 phage didn't do much. Um, oh well, maybe, we don't know what that is, but we'll come back to that later. Uh, and that's just with this plate. So we're gonna kind of run the numbers now and see how we go from, from these plates to a graph. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna stand up here and I'm just gonna count. Uh, so I'm gonna say, okay, we have this top one, and how many, how many little spots can I go down uh, before I don't see any phage plaques? Oh, and one more thing to point out. Uh, yesterday I was mentioning that I like to stab my agar plates, and so now you can see why. So when I have a situation like here where there's clearings, it's really obvious where the spots went, no problem. But on this plate where I have protection, I don't see those clearings anymore. And the only indication I have are those little white dots that I put there. Uh, so those really help as far as uh, knowing where you would want to see any sort of a phenotype. Um, so let's uh, just count this. So here's our lambda one. Okay, one, two, three, four, definitely four. See a couple of plaques there. So I'm gonna say we have five orders of magnitude down there. So that's five serial dilutions. So I took 10 microliters went into there and spotted five there, uh, 10 out of that 100 into there, so tenfold, 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 tenfold dilutions, five orders of magnitude. Here, I'm not even gonna count it, this is just, you know, bunk, I don't know what that is. Um, so we know that we don't have to worry about that, it's already kind of pre-crossed out, I guess, that wasn't intentional. Uh, but then our lambda veer here, we can count going down again, so one, two, three, four, five, do I see a six? I see a six. So six orders of magnitude. Great. Uh, T4, I see one, two, three. I see three. I see three orders of magnitude clearing. So that's what we have on this uninduced plate. So we'll put that to the side real quick and then we'll take our other plate and then we'll do that same kind of counting. So let's, uh, I want to try to bring this up in the light. Uh, can we see that? 
that good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have, well, there's our first spot. Let's see if we can even see anything. So I'm actually gonna turn this around and I'm gonna try to get the reflection on it. Uh, you can see where those, I'm looking right there. Oh, and I don't see any clearing there. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna claim that there's no clearing there. So I'm gonna say zero. Here again, that one we don't care about. That's our contamination. So that's lambda, zero clearing. This other thing we don't care about. Then we go to the lambda veer, uh, which is gonna be right there. I don't see any clearing. There's our spot. Again, I'm gonna claim that that is a zero. And then we're gonna go to T4. Actually see a little bit of clearing. Oh, I'm having trouble with it. Yeah, I see a little bit of clearing. It's kind of, I'd say, I'd know to call that one or two. I'm gonna call that two. So two orders of magnitude clearing there. So that's kind of how you do it. Now I'm gonna really quickly zip through the uh, rest of the plates here. So on this one, we have DH10B. On lambda phage, I see one, two, I'd say three orders of magnitude here. Now, the other thing is you gotta be honest with yourself. Sometimes you want your experiment to work and you're just like, oh, well, maybe it's there, but if it's not, it's not. I think I see three there. I'm pretty sure I see three. Uh, it does make it a little bit harder to see though because I have this chunk of agar and when I poured this original plate, that kind of, I gave an irregularity in the top agar. I should have missed that when I was uh, spotting yesterday. I guess there wasn't enough room. Uh, either way, just, you know, that can mess things up. But I'm pretty sure I see three clear. Well, do I see three clearings or am I lying to myself? You know what? I'm going to actually call that two. I'm going to be conservative here. So let's cross that out. Call that two again. You've got to be honest with yourself. Don't care about this one. Uh, and then on our veer, we see one, two, three, four. Definitely four. Let's see if we see a fifth. Actually, I do see one there. I see a single colony, so five. Uh, five orders of magnitude. And then on T4, do I see anything? I see zero. Over here, the other condition, we got anything with lambda. Nothing. Don't care about that condition. Our veer is also completely protected. Uh, T4, I see one, two, three orders of magnitude. One, two, three. Um, another thing is when you're doing these counts, uh, it's really helpful to actually uh, count down the order of magnitude that you see, and then you're gonna wanna count individual spots. And so usually what happens is uh, you just get like a thick plaque, like if we go back to this example, um, you get a nice, uh, thick plaque right like that one and then another thick plaque and then another thick plaque and then another and then around here it starts to get a little bit mottled so it's harder to see that one and then down here you actually start to get individual colonies or individual plaques so they're really small uh, they're not bleeding together and then down here I see like a couple so I would actually want to count those and then that will give me slightly better numbers uh, so we're not gonna do that for now, uh, but that is normally how you're gonna wanna do that. Just in the interest of time, we'll do kind of a rough pass. Um, okay, so we got these two plates halfway there. Uh, so we have 1655, MG 1655, our lambda, we got one, two, three, obviously. Turn it around, one, two, three. Okay, I want to see a fourth, but I don't, so I'm gonna call that three. Uh, this one we don't care about. Our veer takes us down to one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so if I was gonna be really quantitative about it, I see one, two, three, I see four plaques uh, on this one, so I'd say four, six, so I would enter it as four uh, E6. Uh, at T4, I see one, two, three, four, five, the T4 likes to lice MG6 and five. it looks like. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, good. 
Uh, and then the induced condition uh, for lambda, zero plaques. This one you don't care about, that's a zero, not a six. Uh, for our veer, zero plaques. And for our T4, I see three. Uh, and again, I want to give a really good uh, kind of reflection. So if I'm looking at this, I see I'm looking for those little uh, spots that I made. I don't know if you can see. Okay, so there's an example. You can see the the kind of the craters I made with the pipette tips yesterday, and they don't have any clearing on the lambda veer, which is right there, and they don't have any clearing on this lambda right down there. Those spots are harder to see on the camera. But I'm looking at the spots and I'm seeing if I have any clearing. And if there's no clearing, that means it was protected. All right, and here's our last set. Uh, up here we have clearing one, two, three, four. I see five. And again, uh, if we, wait, is that five? Or am I looking? Uh, it's actually harder to tell. Sometimes these things can be really tough to tell. I'm actually going to be conservative again. I'm going to call that four. I definitely see four. Uh, we don't care about that one. Our lambda view goes down to one, two, three, four, five, and I count four plaques on this fifth one. And then our T4, we get, we get, I don't see, I see one, two, three, I see four orders of magnitude here.